Hello all, we're just down doing some boomerang practice again and I thought I'd bring out some of my boomerangs to show uh, you can see my black ones over here which are just the practice ones when they break, they break no real concern uh, they were made by a friend of mine, Linton who is an awesome Aboriginal painter and weapon maker um, these ones I forget his name, he was Joe Skin, I think his name was. Um, also an Aboriginal artist. So I'll put them because you can actually see the leading edges and the trail edges easier on these than on the ones I painted. Over here we have a hunting boomerang. So just a, um, I think it's called a hook boomerang. Now just to carefully some of the information when we talk about boomerangs we put them into two classes we have this class which is called give you a guess I'll give you a quick guess no oh, no okay it's called returning boomerangs and then we have another class which are these these are called non-returning boomerangs non-returning boomerangs are usually classed as hunting boomerangs where these ones even though, you know, if you hit a bird or a bat with them, they'll probably knock them out of the sky. But they're not classed as hunting boomerangs. A lot of the time they were used for trickery, noise. Chuck them over the bushes and it will make a whizzing sound. Birds, you know, get scared. They fly up. Either, you know, get speared and land in nets. Or big burfers will take them out. Now this boomerang, even though it's quite large, it's actually one of the smaller ones. In the old days, they could be as tall as a man, you know, six, seven foot for just one boomerang. You know, imagine getting hit by one of those in warfare. Now, as I was talking before about edges. Now, on this you can see them, but in person you can see them, I should say, but on video you can't. So we'll use the ones here, which are as black. Okay, we have one side which is usually classed as the flat side and one side that's more of a curved side. So the easy one for this is the painted side's curved side, non-painted side is the flat side. Or another easy way, like how I can tell with this, is the flat side will have what's classed as an undercut. So you can see right here, see how it's been carved out? That's a undercut. Nowhere else on the boomerang has that undercut only this side on that side all these edges are perfectly crisp but when you flip it over now you can see here it has almost a 45 degree angle that's called a trailing edge now up here it's only a small you know like the edge has been taken off now that is called a leading edge so trailing, leading. And on the other side, you have the trailing edge here and the leading edge. Now when you throw a boomerang, these are right-handed. So that undercut is always in your hands. And it's always facing on the outside. So the flat side with the undercut is always facing out. That way it will curve pretty much back and in towards you if it's made correctly. A lot of the tourist boomerangs that you'll buy, they will not actually have any undercuts or leading edges. They will pretty much just be a blank. They go of, you know, a dead boomerang, no life added to it. So those edges are what make them actually turn around. And you can see in some of my videos, I'll post later of me throwing some of the actual boomerangs around and you can see how they curve now with the hunting boomerang these never curved pretty much you throw these in a straight line and it'll go like a frisbee in a straight line and hit whatever animal you're after and i decided i'd bring a little uh bit of granite now the reason i chose this one is because it's got a nice strong edge but it's pretty much 
yeah you could almost cut down trees with this but something like that also a good scraper to do for your leading edges pretty much rub it carve it and it'll make your leading edge for you quite simple and easy to do so I'll show you some of the videos of me throwing today it's got a little bit of strong winds but we'll see how it goes now one of the rules for when you're throwing boomerangs is to throw it sort of towards the wind but not quite towards the wind you're throwing it so the wind's coming from that direction so I'm choosing 45 degree angle away choosing my undercut to hold so my undercuts there now I'm not throwing the boomerang straight like that I'm not throwing it curved like that I'm throwing it almost in a 25 degree angle or down to 10 and I'm gonna throw it on that angle winds over here throwing it on the angle and just releasing it and the wind caught it a little bit when the wind catches it, it will pretty much bypass you. And my daughters are throwing them. So, say hello, Tempe. <laughs> say hello, Tempe. Boomerang, please. So once again, leading edge. Remember, these are trickery boomerangs. You know, all they're going to do is make noise to scare the birds so the hunters can catch them so they don't necessarily have to come back to you so you know they're just bypassing me i could probably reach out and grab them but with one hand in the camera it's not the best see that one's didn't quite work and we're going to throw again and it's curving back towards I don't love catching it. And it hit my tripod. And again. And it's curving around. And coming back. Okay. I'm just going to turn you off. And so I just recollected them. So leading head. Leading edge is in my hand. Girls back. Safety. All the girls should be behind me. Behind me little girls. So. What I'm going to attempt to do is four boomerangs and to chuck them up in the air now they should fly a little bit of wind but we'll see how it goes sometimes i can do it sometimes i can't do it sometimes one will fail in mid-air we'll just see yeah okay. yeah ready set and there they go heads